Uh, all right, we're starting. So, test four, the last test. Um, it's three problems long. So, the first one is um, integrals. It's going to have parts, four or five problems, um, definite and indefinite. All right, so it's just like problem, usually like problem two in the past finals, where you just have problem two, do a bunch of these integrals, A, B, C, D, da, da, da. you just do all of them. So it's a bunch of those, that's one problem. And the second problem will be one on Riemann sums. You're going to ask you to approximate an error using Riemann sums. So I'll tell you the number of subintervals I want, and if I want you to use right hand, left hand, or a midpoint. Of them. Uh, and three here between curves. Which is what we did last class. Uh, bonus. Probably applications. What's that? Hi. <laughs> 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 Usually what happens is if I, before this when we were doing derivatives and I would give you a, a, a problem like this, I'd give you the position function, you can differentiate to find velocity, you can differentiate to find acceleration, right? So the idea is here, you know that to go from position to velocity to acceleration, you would differentiate. So to move down into this, you differentiate. But now we know how to anti-differentiate. We actually know how to go in the opposite direction. Which means I don't have to always give you position now. I could give you the velocity if I want and then ask you about the position because you know how to go backwards. Or you, you, I could give you the acceleration function and tell you find the position. You know how to anti-differentiate. Right? So um, things like that. Right? Just. Basically, whatever we learned about derivatives, I can ask you about something to reverse it. Because now we know how to reverse it. Um, so finding the, a distance given some velocity or something like that, I can ask you to put into it. But the, the main part of the test is, would be these three problems. Do a bunch of integrals, like in, in part problem two of most of the finals. Uh, Riemann sums and error between curves. So that being said, any questions? I would want to go over. You have been practicing it. Oh, yeah. How would a Raymond problem look like? Oh, it will say approximate the area under this function on this interval using n sub intervals. Will you give us the picture? No, I'm not going to give it. You have to grab the word. Uh, subdivision. Yeah, subdivision. Yeah, subdivision. Yeah, subdivision. For this? Not necessarily. Usually not. What about for the area between curves? I might ask you to graph that, but the graphs would usually be easy, like parallels and straight lines. Okay. <laughs> so. I have a question. That's not even. Okay. Do okay. you have any problem? So, yeah. the integral. What's it from? Where's it from? Oh, fall 2010. It's from fall 2010. Uh, number 
parentheses, 2x plus 1, parentheses, x minus 3, all over x. Like this? All over yeah. x? Yeah, okay. dx. That's it? Yeah. Okay, how do you do that? How can you? First, I'll take it. Yeah, take that. First. Never mind. What? <laughs> I'll take it back. I'll make everything like that. That's the resident math joke. She goes around to math class. <laughs> like, everybody. I don't know what you can do. All right. Like, every, she, saw, she goes to all these math classes and she's not even in. Are you even in calculus? Are you in calculus at all? What would you do here? If you all watch a video and do Icky mentions where's Alexia, she's never here, he's talking about me, just like so you know. Okay, so it's gonna be what you can do is you can like multiply, so you could do like two x to the three. No, I don't think we'll do that. Just no, and then, then you make them like, over x and then you find them like separate. You take the one x. What is that? What is that? Or you can do two x plus one over x plus x minus three over x. Is that gonna make sense? No. I, I think wouldn't you just multiply it out and just divide by x? Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's not a substitution problem. Yeah. You, there is no u. It's no. actually, you multiply out. This would be 2x squared. You'd have x minus 6x minus 3 all over x. So you just expand it. Right? And then you divide x into everything. So you just have 2x minus 5 minus 3 over x. And these are just basic rules. Power rules apply here and here, and that's ln. So this is x squared minus 5x minus 3 ln x. Okay. Yeah. That's what I got. So applying basic rules, that's what you do. So you see something like that? It's not really a substitution problem because the substitution wouldn't really help you. Um, but you have one thing in the denominator, so you kind of think, can I actually divide it and simplify? Usually you will be able to. Other questions? Um, I have the 3B. Three, three. three what? 3B three three right. from the same one. Okay. Uh, integral from 4 to 9, 1 over square root of x, x. That's it? Yeah. Okay. What now? You substitution? No, no, it's not a substitution. If you're a substitute, what would you substitute? There's nothing you, can, you can substitute. Yeah. You cannot substitute. There's nothing to substitute. Right? You, you make u equals x, but that's always a bad substitution. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so you're going to make, it's going to be x and the negative one half, and then you're going to take the x and the derivative, so you're going to add them. So it's just we're applying the power rules, yeah. you get x to the 1 half divided by 1 half between so 4 and 9. Yeah. Or 2x to the 1 half between 4 and 9. And so what does that become? F of b minus f of a. Right, so you plug in the 9 minus you plug in the 4. And what's that? Things simple. Always go with the simpler thing first, right? If you get a problem, the first thing you want to look for, can the power rule work? Or can I simplify this to use one of the basic rules? Don't automatically just think, oh, substitution. It's on a test. Jermon's going to try to kill me with this hard substitution problem. No. Think easy first. And if that can't help, then you try to think about substitution. Okay. Other questions? Spring 09, problem what? B. What? Problem? I mean 3B. 3B. Okay, what is that? There's 
Okay. How about this one? What do you think? You have to substitute. Oh, yeah, it has to be a substitute eventually. <laughs> She's going to keep saying substitute until it's right. <laughs> okay, what would you substitute though? Uh, LN of 4x. <coughs> then what? BU derivative. BU would be? 1 over 4x. Uh, dx. Dx. Is that true? No. That's not right. What's wrong? Mm -hmm. What well, is supposed to be du dx? Mm -hmm. One over. Mm -hmm. Don't forget our rules. What's the derivative of ln of something? means I can solve for my dx here. It's just equal to x du. And so I'm going to plug into this integral. So remember the 1 and the 3, they go with x. So I'm going to put x equals 1 to 3. And I'm going to start substituting. So my ln becomes u. There's this 3x that I didn't do anything with. And my dx will become x times du. x is your cancel. This 3 I can factor out. So I end up with u du. Now what? didn't actually do any integration yet. We just did a substitution. So we still have to apply the rule. We still have to integrate this with respect to u. And that's just the power rule. So u to the 1, you add 1 to the power, divided by the mean power. So <laughs> you don't just plug back in u at this point. You have to actually perform the antiderivative rule. So at this point, you get u squared over 6 between x equals 1 and 3. Now what? because these numbers you want to plug in, but they go with x's. So I'm going to replace the u with ln of 4x. And now I can plug in the 1 and the 3. What did I plug in? Plug in the 3 first. That's the fundamental theorem of calculus. So I'm going to take the 3 plug into the x. So I would get ln of 12 squared over 6 minus
integral is three over x ln of x squared. Is the x squared inside the ln? How do you do this one? Yes. Okay, so you're going to take u and you're going to make it equal to ln x squared. And then you're going to take the derivative of u, which is. Is it 1 over x squared? No. 1 over x squared. Oh, you do the u. So you prime over u. So 2x over. dx would become this guy, x du over 2. My x's would cancel. 3 over 2 is a constant. I can factor that out. And I end up with 1 over u du. Now what? So this gives us ln of absolute value of u. And then we back up. I just take what my u was, I replace it with the original. all this and you plug in, you still have to integrate. You still have to apply the integration rules. Before plugging the... Yes, before plugging the u back in. You have to actually do the antiderivative first. The point of doing the substitution is to make the original integral look like a basic rule. Integral. And you apply the basic rule, which gives you this, and then you plug in. So when we get ln, we do u prime over u? Oh, yeah, that, by the way, that is a common mistake, which... Common mistake is back substituting jumping the gun. So people just plug in the ln of x squared here, which is totally wrong. Don't jump the gun. You have to actually get rid of that integral sign before you start plugging it back in. Other questions? Okay, um, fold 2010, number is 18. See? By the way, if you 
At this point, hopefully what you'd notice could happen is that two is a common factor, right? Yeah. Which means I can factor out a two and I would be left with three x minus one, which it, it's right there. Oh yeah. So now you plug this in. You have this 3x minus 1, which you didn't do anything with. This becomes e to the u, and your dx becomes du divided by 2 times 3x minus 1. This cancels that. The 2 you can factor out. And what happens here? Antiderivative of e to the u is itself. And then you back substitute. By the way, remember when you're doing a substitution, there are two things that have to come to mind. One, you want to make the thing simpler. Two, the derivative must be somewhere else in the function. If you had chosen u equals 3x minus 1, your du would just be 3. It would just be a constant, which doesn't really matter. You'd still have something insanely complicated here, right? e to a, a quadratic power is not something we know how to deal with, right? So it, it, it wouldn't help to make this the u, so right? It does make it simpler and the derivative doesn't help us. So when we see e to the something, we just get the exponent to be equal u? Usually, not always, but usually. You're always going to look there first, if, especially if this is complicated. What about if it is a 2x? That's a difference theory? e to the 2x? If this was e to the 2x? Uh -huh. um, that would be impossible for you in total okay. five. That's a 202 thing. So what if um, we use substitution even though we weren't supposed to, but we always forget the same thing? If you use substitution even if you're not supposed to? Yeah, because like, what if we see it and it looks complicated and we use substitution? Odds are you, it wouldn't really make a difference. Um, it's possible to get the right answer, but it would usually be more work than it's worth. Because I mean, even the very first one, technically you could do a substitution there. It just it wouldn't be worth it. It'll actually take a long, take a long. Time. So use it only if you need to. So the first thing you try, when you see an integral, the first thing you're going to try to do is simplify it to make it look like one of those basic <coughs> ideas of the first three, either the power rule or the integral of e to the x or the integral of one over x. If it doesn't look like that and you can't simplify it like that, then you do a substitution. Get rid of the complicated part and make sure that its derivative is somewhere else in the function. Yes? How different questions are there? Yes. So this just becomes one half e to the 2x 
minus x. So no substitution necessary. It's a matter of expanding. Spring 2009 problem. Yeah. <coughs> problem one. Three C. Is that integral? Four over zero point four adding minus zero point four x. Dx. Okay. What happens here? What is your substitution? So your du would become 0.4 dx. So your dx becomes d over 0.4. So you plug that in. So you have to go 4 over mu times d over 0.4. substituted, there was no other x's, there is no function there. I only had another constant, so it shouldn't be alarming that I don't have a function because I did in row 7. Again, we want to make it look like that. I would actually factor out a minus two. If I factor out a minus two, then that would actually give me a positive three here and a minus x there. Isn't that the same? And so what we have now is the integral of three minus x times u to the fifth times du over minus two times the u Minus one half to the fifth DU. What happens here? What happens here? U to the six over six. All right, power of U to the six over six. There's this half minus a half here plus C. Now your back substitute is minus one twelve. My u was this guy. Of the boundary in between the 
factors y equals 4 minus x squared and y equals x squared. Area? And just yes. the bond in between the curves? Yes. Okay. So it did it say sketch? No. So it didn't say sketch, so it means you don't have to sketch, which technically you kind of know that this is the top and that's the bottom, right? Mm -hmm. Do you realize that? Yeah. Is that a thing that we would know? How do we know? How do we know? Because I know what these guys look like. That's upside down shifted up four units. This guy would be like that at zero, right? Okay. So when x equals zero, this guy's at four, that guy's at zero. Okay. When I see that, I think this, and when I see that, I think this, yeah, so that's top and bottom. Okay. Mm -hmm. yep. yeah. <laughs> right. This guy's at four when that guy's at zero, he's bigger. Okay. If I plug in x equals zero, he's at four. Okay. Um, so you didn't have to sketch it, but you could have it if you're not sure. Oh, we need, we still need the intersections, right? So this sketch here is optional. So you plug one into the other, that means you have x squared is equal to 4 minus x squared. So you get 2x squared equals 4. So that x equals plus or minus radical 2. So this intersection here is radical 2. That intersection there is minus radical 2. And so area is the integral of, remember, it's top minus bottom between minus radical 2, positive radical 2. Symmetry applies here, but not, don't confuse yourselves with that. I'm just going to take the top one, which is 4 minus x squared minus the bottom one, which is x squared. I'd usually simplify before doing it. So this is 4 minus 2x squared dx. It'll help you later with the arithmetic between minus radical 2 and radical 2. So what's this? What does that become? 4x. 4x. Yes. 2x cubed over 3. And minus radical 2 and positive radical 2. So I plug in radical 2 first. 4 times radical 2 minus 2 times radical 2 cubed over 3 minus, I plug in minus radical 2. Radical 2, you add these two together. And so this would be minus 4 times radical 2 to 3. So again, remember the, the whole process, it's sketch, optional might be required, but if you're not sure, sketch it. If you don't, if you don't care, find the intersections so you know it's between minus radical 2 and radical 2 and plug in a random number in between it into both functions. 0 here would be a good number to plug in. You realize I did give you 4, that gives you 0, so this is the top. And so then I know that it, I integrate that minus that between the limits. And the rest is like power rule and fundamental theorem of calculus. Yeah. Okay, so we could combine the two equations and combine the two. Like the two equations that combine the two. I know. 
Yeah, I just combine. I just I simplify this. Okay. Minus x squared minus x squared is minus two x squared. Right, minus. and then you find underneath. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Is there There's nothing wrong with doing it here, but it will actually be more work because when you anti-differentiate this, now you have three things to plug in instead of two things to plug in, and then this would be like two terms longer, and people's brains will spaz out. So after plugging into this formula, I'll kind of simplify first and then go through the, the process. But this is basically how you're going to attack an area problem. Sketch, intersection, integration formula, the rest is power rule, very usually. Okay. Yes? So all scores in 10, number 7, 8. find the intersections first and then we'll know where we want to put things. So if you don't want to draw if you don't want to draw the graph, right? If you don't have to. You can just plug in any number to see which one's on top and No, it has to depend on where the intersection is. Okay. So the intersection we solve this guy. How do I solve that? Move this over. That over. That over. Now what? Factor. So x equals minus one and x equals minus two, right? So I wouldn't just plug in any number. I plug in a number between these two. So if I plug in like minus one and a half, right. so I'll check these guys. So if I take three times zero to minus eight times minus two plus seven, what's that going to give us? 27 over 4 minus 24 over 2 plus 7. This guy would give us 9 over 4 minus 2 plus 3. Who's bigger? What's this? 20, 27 over 4 is what? Roughly. Okay, what's the Huh? It's 7.4. It's almost 8, right? Yeah. So it's roughly around 8. 24 over 2 is roughly around 12. And then you have a plus 7, right? Right, so that would give you one. Yeah, so this is roughly three. It's a little less than three, right? This guy, what do we have? Nine over four is roughly what? Two. It's roughly two. It's close to two. Yeah. This guy would be close to three. And then that guy, you have a plus three. So this guy is roughly two, right? So this guy is bigger. You don't, you don't have to get specific with it. You just want to know who's on top, who's on bottom. So you can kind of 
squiggle it a little bit. And so now you know that the area is just the integral of top minus bottom. So it's going to be the antiderivative of 3x squared plus 8x plus 7 minus x squared plus 2x plus 3. And the limits are from minus 2 up to minus 1. determine the top one. Uh, so now I have 2 times minus 1 plus 3 times minus 1 plus 4 times minus 1 minus Seven over four minus uh, twenty. What? Minus twenty. Minus what? It's one point seven five. Isn't that twelve plus seven is five? So mi it's a minus twelve. It's one point seven five. So minus twelve. So you minus twelve. So you left with minus five. Just minus five. And then and you five is yeah. right. Minus five, which is minus twenty. Yeah. Twenty over four. Uh -huh. So this gives us seven over four. Uh -huh. What? What did we do last time? Yeah. Where did you get that close to three? I think I don't know what happened last time. Anyway, so this one. So that actually was seven over four. This one gave us what? This here is twelve over four. Three is. Um, <coughs> Also, so that's nine over four. 
So it's actually the opposite. This was the top. I don't know what happened there. It's, it's probably Alexia's fault. Um, so this should actually be switched. So just make the negative over. And so then this would just be one third. I created a common denominator because this was already four 9 over 4. Four, four, four. I just wanted to put everything over 4. So the 3 I, re I multiplied by 4 over 4, and then four. that other guy I multiplied by 2 over 2. Get everyone in denominator 4. That's good. But, so by the way, this, that's something that's a good. You should get a positive answer here. So if you don't get a positive answer, you know something is wrong, you should go back and check where you made a mistake. Use it, using this formula, you'll always get a positive answer. Yes, this is, it's always going to give you a positive answer. Another final. Yeah, the two. The they, they posted spring 2016, was it? Yeah. You see the format changed? Nope. Is our final going to be like that one? Can you format that uh, one? Probably not. I'll tell you. I'll, I'll, I'll make a mock final. Okay, that means you. Okay, so fall 2013, what? Um, 8 AMB. So it is to sketch the curve y equals 1 over x squared. It says sketch? Yeah. 1 over x squared? Okay. Yeah. And then b is just um, using the random sum of 3 equal sub intervals and left endpoints estimate what happens. N equals 3? Um, left endpoints estimate left. what happens. Estimate what? The value of integral 4, 1, 4 on the top, well, 1, 4, yes. Um, 1 over x squared, yes. Okay, so what does the graph of that look like? That graph with that curve, like that, yeah. That's not a curve. That's not a curve. Definitely. That is fine. It's like curtains. <laughs> Never heard that. <laughs> okay. So this is basically asking you to approximate the area between one and four. So that's kind of what they're asking to approximate here. Um, so how do we set it up? What is the first thing we do? Delta x. Delta x. First, find delta x, which is b minus a over n, which here is. 4 minus 1 over 3, so it's actually just 1. So now we have the interval 1 to 4 that we're going to split into three equal sections. So we have 1 to 4 that I'm splitting into three equal sections. And my delta x tells me the length of each section. So here I have 1, 2, 3. And I'm asked about left-hand endpoint estimates, so I'm going to take the 1, the 2, the 3, and that's going to give my form. So my area is going to be approximately equal to delta x times. What graph is that? 1 over a squared? Yes. Uh, yeah, that's the one over Well, so that's what you meant by that's the graph. <laughs> Here we have f of 1 plus f of 2 plus f of 3. Are you trying to fit in it? <laughs> F of one, which is 
Well, you just plug into the, the one. function. So it's 1 over 1 squared plus 1 over 2 squared plus 1 over 3 squared. 1 plus a quarter plus 1 ninth. Yeah, so the, 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 the numbers on the, the limits of the integral <coughs> tells you actually the interval that you're on. So we know it's going from 1 to 4. They told us n equals 3, 3 subintervals. So I know I split down 3 equals sections. Each section has length 1, which is the delta x. And then I just take the left side. If you, if you were to say that there's 3 subintervals, right, but you were asking for the midpoints, would we still, would the... The midpoints would use 1.5, yeah. 2.5, and 3.5. So, so I put in 1.5 here, 2.5 here, 3.5. Okay. But the delta x was the weak one. Delta x was still normal. Is that an overestimate or underestimate? Well, I mean, if you cut this into three sections, and the left side of the rectangle oh, touches the curve, what would happen? The left side would go here, and that would be your rectangle. Then here, that would be the rectangle. And here, that would be the rectangle. So it's actually an overestimate, which might be something I'd ask. Sounds like a very Javon thing to do. How do you find the exact area? So for the exact area here. Does anybody Can you find that intersection? No, you just find that. Which is how do you do this? Yes, so x to the negative 2, you add 1, so x to the negative 1. So you have minus 1 over x between 1 and 4. So you get minus a quarter plus 1. So the actual answer is 3 points. And that's the actual area under this curve. It's 3 fourths. And this would be an approximation to that. But it'll actually be a little bit bigger than three shorts. Other questions? That's, that's like part two to that question. Or is that just it could be another part of the question. Oh, so it's not that's the whole rest of that.
First I had split it up. Because this one we know is just X. Now for this one, what would you do? there are no numbers on the interval. Work, no matter what. 
It's a fact that one plus one is two. You can always apply it any time as long as it's convenient. You had a question? Yeah. Yes. Spring 10, 7B. Spring 10, 7B. It says set up, but do not solve the green of the approximate area under the curve and under the graph. Yeah. Yeah. F of x equals x squared. One less than or equal to x. Less than equal to 3 and equals 5 and find the midpoints using midpoints yeah. yes. Eleanor B is 0 Eleanor B is 1 oh, wow. okay so what do we do here delta x is the first thing you do b minus a over n which is Three minus one over five is two fifths, which means my interval here is between one and three, and I'm going to cut this into five equal sections, and each section is two fifths, right? So this is five over five, which would be seven over five, which would be nine over five, be eleven over five. 13 over 5. That would be 15 over 5, which is 3. But then it says use midpoints. So what, about, what would I do there? So I take the first one and I add it and divide by, add the first two numbers and divide by 2. So I take 1 plus 7 over 5 all over 2. That's 12 over 5 divided by 2, which is 12 over 10. <laughs> which is 6 over 5. So this is 6 over 5 here. And so now what you're doing is you keep adding delta x to that. So 6 over 5 plus 2 over 5, that will give you 8 over 5 plus 2 over 5, that would be 10 over 5, plus 2 over 5 would be 12 over 5, plus 2 over 5 would be 14 over 5. And so this means your area is delta x, which is 2 fifths, times, now we're just going to keep plugging these numbers into that. So 6 over 5 squared plus 8 over 5 squared plus 12 over 5. And that's your answer. Because the problem set set up and do not solve, so you wouldn't go any further than that. That's <coughs> Other questions? this weekend and sometimes next sometime next week I'll have like a, a session to go over the mock final. Which, yes. Is the mock final similar to the final? Yeah, yeah it'll be pointless. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even understand where this mistrust comes from honestly. 
instance. <laughs> I'm going to give you a file and something completely different. Like, I don't trust you. <laughs> Can't trust a lot of us for that. No, there are no questions I can give you guys back. Your test. Which I was very pleased with the test. The class overall really jumped up. In fact, I'm so pleased. I think what I'll do for you guys is I will drop two tests instead. Yay! I'm not going to do that for her class though, because they didn't do so well. You guys actually need their class this time. So yeah, uh, MTH. I can cut it off before I post it. <laughs>